I'm delighted to share some background to our upcoming paper in the Journal of Developmental and Behavioural Paediatrics. The paper is focused on the health and neurodevelopment of children born to opioid-dependent mothers at age four and a half. In the last 10 to 15 years, there's been an escalation in the use of opioids in the general population. This trend is also seen amongst um, women of childbearing age and pregnant women. The analysis that we report on in the paper draws on data from a prospective longitudinal study that we undertook in Christchurch, New Zealand. We recruited mothers in pregnancy with really high retention, over 90%. The sample consisted of two groups of children, one of babies whose mothers were opioid dependent. The second was another group of babies who were not exposed to methadone, who were typically developing and born during the same developmental period. At age four and a half, we undertook a comprehensive multidisciplinary assessment. The assessment spanned health and neuromotor function, approaches to learning, cognition, language, and socio-emotional adjustment and behavior. Of particular interest in this paper was not just describing the outcomes, but to examine the extent to which children may present with multiple problems. And that's important because we know that these children tend to have a more severe presentation, as well as being at greater risk long term. The second primary aim was really around understanding some of the mechanisms and risk processes that might lead to these later difficulties in children. What we did find was that these children had high rates of problems across all of those outcome domains, with odds ratios ranging from four to five relative to the comparison group, suggesting that clearly these children are in need of developmental surveillance and probably early intervention. To conclude, I'd like to share a little bit of data that I've found very interesting, which is a comparison of the health and neurodevelopmental outcomes that we saw in this cohort of children relative to another cohort of children that were born very preterm in Christchurch. The number of children who were free of impairment is relatively similar, as is the number of children with one or multiple domain impairments. Very preterm children would normally be eligible for early intervention and support services. Um, and I would argue that based on our data and this comparison, methadone exposed or opioid exposed children need to be um, captured by developmental surveillance and monitoring.